Hi, I'm Paul Roberts. This is Conscious Counseling 101. And uh, just some thoughts that I want to share with general populace and my mom and dad as well. Um, I was uh, looking at this book um, while I was waiting for my phone to upload. I've got all these books. You know, I use them as decoration. You know, because I like classic things. I like the old world look. But we live in a different world. And I hardly ever open them. And I definitely don't read them. But uh, this book here, I wanted to, to bring some attention to it today. Um, just randomly picked it up. Uh, published in 1947. And it's called The Last Days of Hitler. Wow, that's, what is it, 1947? That's like over 70 years ago. I just wanted to read this, this beginning part here, because I didn't have time to read the book while my phone was updating. I just read this first paragraph and just thought I'd share it. Um, this is the foreword. There used to be a school of historical thought which held that the course of human history was determined largely by political and economic factors rather than by the characters and the actions of individuals. My own experience during this last war has emphasized to me the immense and in some cases decisive influence exercised on the course of events by individual personalities. In the past, it has rarely been possible for the effects of the personality and character of individual leaders to be assessed other than by the study of documents. Their writings may have been recorded, their words may have been memorized, but the life had gone out of them. History written on such a basis is inevitably liable to distortion due to the point of view or due to incomplete evidence. I have a couple of things to say today. That's not the way things are now anymore. It's completely the opposite. Even if you didn't have Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, or anybody else, you have enough to go on on just sound bites of what the character that we're talking about says and thinks and does. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because it is my personal belief that being brought into this world, trying to come to grips with what it all means, trying to find religion, trying to find what God or a creator would have for us, trying to assess whether or not Jesus' teachings are valid or not. Speaking to anybody that would listen and hear these concerns. Currently, we are looking at, my family and I, the Sermon on the Mount. And I've looked at it a number of times. Because I've looked at many Jesus' teachings. And if you just take the sound bites no documents to study here okay there's there's no there's nothing lost and you don't have to look at opinions of people that have conspiracy theories they'd like you to listen to and different takes on things because they have different purposes that they want to gain if they can get you to do what they want you don't have to listen to that if you just take the sound bites of the individual and what he thinks and says with his mouth and you say, according to Jesus, let your yes be yes and your no be no. I don't see how you can conclude anything else but that the individual believes and thinks contrary and antithetical to the teachings that we know of of Jesus. 
Now, I don't want to get into the Old Testament or further on into the New Testament. If you just talk about just the Sermon on the Mount, the individual, based on the clips of what he says and thinks and does, no news interpretation, just what he says and thinks and does, and portrays as himself, is completely against Jesus' teachings. And Jesus says that no fruit on any good tree can be bad, and no fruit on any bad tree can be good. So when I come before you as Paul Roberts, telling you what I think, I don't want you to think, as David said, that I have gone over to the dark side because I live in California, or I'm a liberal, or a left-wing wacko. I don't even know what that is. All I know is that I came into this world, and the highest thing that I could come to find, that I use for my own life as best as I can, and for my family's life, is the teachings of Jesus. They seem like what a creator would want us to to do with our life if the Creator cared for us and loved us. And not just us, but all of us working together. And so, I implore you to see, not to stand so firmly on one side of a political spectrum is heading towards evil and darkness, and one side of a political spectrum is heading towards goodness and purity and what God would want. I implore you to see simply that the political spectrum just shows how we would organize the way we do things in order to obtain a result. And yes, the results would be different. Let's look at the end days, for example. If we did proceed towards socialism, where everything was balanced and everything was attempting to be the way that all would have, it's very likely we would indoctrinate ourselves into a system like the beast, take in the number of the beast, and live out the end days scenario where in order to have, we would have to sign on to what the government says, or otherwise our trade would be restricted and maybe we'd be put to death. Who knows how it's going to play out? I don't know how the end days play out. The angels in heaven don't even know when. But what I'm saying to you is if the other side then is more godly, more following like what the Creator would want, like to sustain life, like not having abortions, for instance, are we able? Because we must vote or we'd be apathetic and step away from it. Are we able to make a distinction between whether that label or title that they, that they use, that they're more godly because they support life, is going to be a broad brushstroke for all things, even to allow you to justify supporting someone that's completely, by his own words, not political newscasters' opinions and commentary, but by his own words and professed deeds and actions and thoughts, completely antithetical to Jesus' teachings. Are you actually able to say, I'll support it because the outcome justifies the means. But more importantly, I want you to ask yourself, as I do every day, do I know enough to even make an accurate, well-thought-out conclusion, decision that will ripple into my results of what I do? Do I even know enough? Here's the two things that I think you have to know. One, you have to understand the entirety of the context of the Bible and what the supposed God or Creator would want from us. And two, 
you would have to allow for the unseen God's purposes to play out not thinking that we could control them. I know you're probably thinking, well, here you are trying to to show me your point of view to hope to change the result. Well, every day I say to myself, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't see. Maybe everyone else is right. We're in a very polarized society. What I try to do in this place I find myself is not to out-argue people, not to become more informed, not to say one side's right or one side's wrong, but to say, are we going to stand on the rock that we look at when we talk about Jesus' teachings or not? If we don't, then everything that came before and everything that came after is, is a lot less relevant. If we would put somebody that is completely contrary to everything that Jesus teaches and shows us in the Sermon on the Mount and in his other teachings into a place so that God can somehow have what he wants out of our future and way on earth according to the government governance of man then i say that our first step on that journey down that road was fraught with an unbelievable acceptance of evil and the only way i can say that that unbelievable acceptance of evil could exist and be justified is by the darkness and ignorance that evil promotes being on our shoulders as we make that decision. And I would say then, ask yourself, are you aware of things enough? Are you aware of what's going on and what the greater purpose, at least as defined by our beliefs and religions and texts or just observances, are you aware enough of how we can go down a road that we went on because it was obvious someone was wrong and bad, I'll use the word bad. I use the word bad because it's contrary to what Jesus says is good. Bad fruit, good fruit. Is it possible to arrive at a good conclusion and a good, good world down that pathway. When we know that our first step on our journey was placing our confidence in someone that did not deserve it, to be placed where he ought not be, and to continue to place him where he ought not be, and to allow him to shape our future. Is it possible to do God's work or see God's work done by doing that horrible thing Allowing that horrible thing. Is it possible? I just cannot, as hard as I try, see how that would be possible. And that is my quandary. And I speak to where I came from and who I came from when I speak this. Because others in the midst of where I originated went to the same churches and same schools and the same regional areas of the country. We're exposed to some of the same thought patterns and history. And they developed different conclusions, opposite conclusions to mine. And I wonder whether or not they're being considered enough. I have to wonder this because to me, I consider every day, could, it be, could I possibly be wrong? I wonder if others from where I came from agonizing over that every day as much as I am. And if they aren't, I wonder why they aren't. And I'm so troubled by that. That's my concern. I'm Paul Roberts, Conscious Counselor 101.